This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Do you guys even need me for this? Do y'all match always? <laughs> well, I didn't even know this thing. Oh my God. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> so you're both bouncers in Sushi Roku now? What's happening? I mean, oh, we, got a, listen, we got a grease rehearsal after the show. Uh, I'm Zuko. <laughs> He's kidding me. Was, was, was there a sale in Filene's basement? <laughs> <laughs> oh my is God. Precious. Holy shit, bro! Put something back on. I, got, I can't. I'm, I'm hot. Oh no, God. it's okay. You're fine, Pete, because uh, yours is a V-neck. No. Oh God. <laughs> another dying, another man. reason I've fallen out of love with you today. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm good. The, at least the crush is gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep telling yourself, bro. <laughs> Are you hot? Am I hot? Yeah, I'm in a, here. I'm all right. Okay, we're boys. Oh, by the way, I told you like I four get, times. No, you I'm look fantastic. It's, it's, I'm sweltering hot, but we're. I am going to get just leave. This I'm very nice. hot. I just I'm a professional, and I'm gonna yeah. trudge forward. No, no, no. Are we are boiling in here. That's yeah. why I took the the, the jacket off. I'm uh, sorry. Do you not have air conditioning in your we, we, sound studio? We, in your we do. Home? It's just apparently not uh, not on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's it is on, but we we're not getting anything. There's lighting. Okay. Everyone in here is wearing more clothes yeah. than you guys. Stop right. complaining. I'm going, I'm going to change. Oh, are you really? Yeah, it's just too much of the same outfit, bro. But they already know that. It's, it's fine. It's well, bro, this show is, like this? Wait, what? What? You think someone's going to change the channel? This is viral. By the way, I, not that oh, I, everything way, I have is V-neck, so it's not like I was going to go get you around. Wait, you're going to do back any good changes? Side. Spit out your gum. No, the this gum. is an audio oh, platform. God, I could. That's. I knew I would never be able to write on a show that you were a show on. Because I go to pitch something, you go, "Can you take the gum out so we can all hear you?" Pee? And I go, "How about I just quit? No, how about I do that instead?" It's fine to do in a writer's room, which is on an audio. I don't know. Uh, this is an audio uh, thing. I think uh, the one rule is don't chew gum. I there think was kids crawling on the table two minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, gum and don't matter. And now. they're stars. Uh, okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. You're right. <laughs> when Holly, she's the next Shirley oh, Temple. God. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. Listen, Listen girl, take the gum out for yeah, take me. The, yeah, you take talk it out for me. Yeah, don't take it out. I'm surprised you have it in too. I, I, generally speaking, I never see you. With, never see you with gum on the, the oh, show. I've never. never not had gum in my mouth. I've in never ten seen. You never noticed. Yeah, it's good. You don't do a deep mouth look. I've never seen two more talented people at one thing be so confused about how podcasting works. Oh, Pete's yeah, no, chewing no. gum and Sebastian's whispering. I'm whispering. Uh, that's yeah. why, that's oh, why we have no views. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't even see this being an interview type <laughs> vibe here. Not yet. Not air? yet. Uh, yeah, we don't oh, know. My God. Do you want to reschedule again? Front of the line, this is Aaron. <laughs> this is our next show. This is hot. This is live. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> By the way, I would write on any show you're like, show <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to take a job away from myself. All right. No, I yes. would love I'm to. I'm not a I fast would... typo, though, but I got good jokes. <laughs> By the way, that's not how writers read. I know. I was blown away when I got my first job. I called my wife. I'm like, you don't even need a computer. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy there. I can say that. He types. It's great. He even deletes him. I go, no, take that out. He goes, fucking awesome. Oh, God. Is this the show? Oh, man. What's wrong with it? No, I love it. I'm just. I'm just trying to figure out if, if we're going or yes, we're going. Know, it's, it's recording, right? Cold, we were going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get the uh, <laughs> the internet will Photoshop that, <laughs> and we're good. Oh god! Oh gosh! Oh, I love god. this. How many episodes are you guys on? This cool. is uh, oh god! What are we at? Five ninety-two. Five hundred. Oh boy! Oh yeah! Yeah! Oh yeah! We Wait. we do this for the fun of it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you're almost at six hundred episodes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not making a dollar. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it costs money. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. The, it's the emotional cost, <laughs> incalculable. Yeah. And there was one show I forgot to hit record, so 601. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, this is actually kind of funny to me because, okay, so Pete, you're the yeah. only comedian I've ever for a second had a crush on. Right. For one second. Uh, I know I didn't know you were married at the time. Or I, I don't know. Right. Who cares? Why does it have to be one second? It was very quick. All right. But what, could you tell Please. us where where this was? Was sure. he performing? Did you meet him at 
the sure. uh, yeah. It starts with my terrible childhood All right. and the fact that I'm attracted to people that are are somewhat curmudgeonly and come off miserable because right. I'm like I can save them with oh. my personality. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were leaning against a wall in I want to say Montreal. Uh -huh. I don't know what you. It was I don't know if you were practicing for West Side Story. I don't know what was happening, but you were you were like this guy at Montreal, and all the other comedians, you know what I mean, were all like like so autistic and shaky and insecure, and you just weren't. Yeah. And I was like, who's that guy? Right. And this was oh my god, I don't know when it was. When would Montreal have been? Like ten? Did you do it like? 12 years ago, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I've done a few different times. So I remember the, we were in a gym. That's the one time I remember. We were both in a hotel gym at the same time. So I don't remember that. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people working out, but my point is that was like <laughs> you know, the one year I was, I remember you being there one year, so I don't know if there was any other years. But anyway, why does everyone with the dates are a long time ago? Okay. But I know this isn't even what we were bringing it up. No, but what was the gym? Was that no, at it a was festival? a hotel, the main hotel. At Montreal? Yeah. yeah right. Oh, I don't remember. I was over you by then. Uh, by yeah. the time we had, right, I, right. Was, I saw you and uh, you kind of ignored me when I introduced you. And I find that hot, I guess. Oh. Or back then. <laughs> Where did you introduce me? Uh, I introduced myself to you and oh. you ignored me. <clears throat> oh. And you wow. were like kind of rude. Probably not on purpose. Mm. Eh. Uh, uh, <laughs> you would have catch me out back then and you know so yeah i was probably not so happy and then i yeah. just was like oh okay right, and that right, was it right. all right all right well luckily the crush was the second it so was a it quick not. crush it was because right. then you were nice to me and then so i was over you oh man <laughs> I think it was that's that. the key you gotta be a dick you gotta be a something. dick and then sebastian and i have when i tell you like i mean done things that are so romantic I've never done as romantic things with anyone else before or since <laughs> and still really? just violently platonic really I mean, the, the more romantic moments we have together the more brother and sister this dynamic gets oh, yeah. I mean really? we went to Dubai together sat on a plane next to each other I mean hands kept hitting each other and Sebastian would be like what can you move on uh, <laughs> it was like nothing he yeah. does not have a girlfriend at the time I do not have a boyfriend at the time I have pictures of you and I on the beach oh, yeah. in bathing yeah. suits. There's photos of me it like frolicking in a bathing suit that he took. I mean, I'm so nervous because he's like, can you do that? He's just so annoyed. But I look like I'm being trafficked. I'm just like, take the yeah. picture. We've done so many romantic things, but zero. I, wow. Now, oh, wait, that. All I had to do was lean against the wall. This all the way to Dubai. Nothing. <laughs> I think that it's any any possible anything yeah. Sebastian could have ever thought. Like, oh, what yeah. about Whitney? He was so disgusted my by my behavior on a plane. No, it wasn't. It was you know. You're. You, this is this is where I knew I was like, where I knew. She, well, I knew she was taking off. She. <laughs> Was was writing jokes and <laughs> she had like papers and shit. And I, I had an iP iPod. <laughs> and, <Touch>. uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and her whole thing was like, "Oh man, I'm making movies. I'm fucking doing TV. What are you doing over there?" And I told Pete this before you got here. I I didn't know how successful you were just because I wasn't piped into. What was happening with you? I <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> In the hallway, I don't know if you know if you remember this. I said, "Hey, hey, Whitney, um, I got a contact over at Premium Blend. It was it was like a one of these shows where you get five or six minutes, and I, you know, I think I could, I think I could get you on. And you you looked at me like, <laughs> I uh, I'm doing an hour special. <laughs> like, I did not no, no, say no, no, it no, like that. no, no. But it was it was like. Oh, you don't know what's going Like, you were far <laughs> yeah. beyond that, and I didn't know what was happening. I had no idea you were doing a TV right. show, The Broker. I had no idea what you were doing. I just saw, oh, she's coming to the comedy store, and she's, she, she's really funny, and maybe I could give her, like, a helping hand. Little did I know, she she was getting me special. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't know where you were, and I don't even know if you remember that I, that I came. Do you even remember? That's so I don't. I no, don't. No. I. I. Must, I, I, I I, <laughs> I mean, it's. I feel like if you talked to me in the hallway at all, I would have remembered. Sebastian gets in and out of the comedy store at like an ostrich with his head in the sand. Like he just will walk by right. you, make eye contact with you, and you're like, "Not tonight. Tonight's not the night. Tonight's not the night." He's yeah. he's gonna say hello. Well, I tonight. never listen. And we talked about this on earlier podcast. I feel Whitney mm -hmm. is one of these people 
that is in the know. Like you on your Instagram, I I, I don't know if you've ever done this. Oh, she was but, the queen of Montreal when I was there. Yeah, well, yeah, I, it, just uh, what? Yeah, it, Whitney. What? Don't act like you're not popular. And you, you could know have it. been the first man <laughs> what? of Montreal I, in you know, your past. I know, I know, I blow it. You I have been in a freaking sitcom. I mean, leaning against the wall. Why didn't you ask me to be in a freaking sitcom? Know. Nothing. God damn it. <laughs> Jesus. You know, guy freaking looks like me. Right? I mean, say, well, yeah, I'm testing myself. <laughs> Then I only you have Whitney because you're talking about like her having the hour. I remember when that show didn't go. I didn't even know you had the two broke girls was you. I'm like, holy shit. You're going from lot to lot to check on your shows. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. A Thank any you. Anywhere in the know with like celebrities, right? Yep. I, I hear this. You, you Well, I was looking at your Instagram and, and, and uh, this was back then. I go, God, she knows a lot of people right? Right, right now i don't see that as much from Says the guy who like hangs out with de niro no no, right. no i don't hang out with de niro i i work with de niro and there was no going out to dinner for nine <laughs> weeks okay <laughs> it was there was no hey what are you doing after yeah i know he was opening up a nobu I mean, <laughs> while you, we were on set <laughs> you've probably had pop stars bring over their latest album so you could hear it before it comes out <laughs> right am i right by the way i mean <clears throat> no i don't know why do people do think i'm friends with a lot of celebrities i think that <clears throat> it's I what I'd say the most annoying part is I think when you're a female comic, I don't know if this happens with guys too. Really beautiful women want to be my friend, like models, like big pop stars, because I think it makes them seem funny. It's every beautiful woman's dream to be thought of as funny, right? right. So these like beautiful, I'll go to like an event or, you know, the People's Choice Awards or whatever, and all the like super gorgeous actresses will like want to hang out with me and like, yeah, yeah. like so that other people think they're funny. And then I'm like, I don't want to be around a model. Right. Like this is my nightmare. Like yeah. I don't want to be friends with you, right. you but you want to come off as funny. So I end up sort of like having, I guess. Yeah, it's, of it's like an accident. The dental leader of the pack sort of a thing, man. Yeah. Like she would be at the skybox if she went to the Super Bowl. Oh, absolutely. You know? yeah. What? Like, 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 like you, you don't sit. In like, yeah. Listen, you don't sit in like Gen Pop, no. right? I don't. <laughs> no, no. You, I didn't even get invited. You were at the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. But you what, were there. I, I get it. And I wasn't invited. Is that it, an it, 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 yeah, it is. And I slept at ninety two score last night. By the way, <laughs> do you, do you have one? I don't have one. Okay. Because why, like, what's the, so you need a device to tell you how you slept. Right. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> if it. you wake up, you're like, ah, right. oh, I've no, oh. right. can you just ask Lana? How many other right. ways are you trying to replace your I wife have, with technology? No, my wife would not even know if I was on fire in bed. <laughs> that's how, that's how well, deep she sleeps. What happens if you slept, you felt you slept well, but then your ring says you didn't. You go, oh, you're right. Oh, you're, you're right. right. No, I do good feel point. You know what? I was, whoa, I do feel again. <laughs> I want to see. Is the science backs up the feeling. So last night, I'll take, take, take this for example. I did Pilates for the first time yesterday, okay. right? I was exhausted at night. I got up. I felt so refreshed. I'm like, wow, let's see what the ring says. And it matched my feelings. Right. So I'm like, okay, All right. I'm right. My feelings match the science. But but it, before the ring, you'd be like, ah, oh, I slept a lot. I'm pretty sure. I, but I just had to how I prove that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's not just Yeah, like, I need science I, to back this up. I, I need, can't trust yeah. myself. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the groundhog don't see a shadow and it does be a short winter. But that's all just a coincidence. You know what I'm saying? You could just wear jewelry if you want. Yeah, no, no, I'm not a jewelry You could just wear jewelry. I, 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 this is the, yeah, yeah, Just sure, wear so jewelry. Just want, you want you to wear a Johnny ring. Depp ring thing. Wear a, yeah, no. <laughs> just wear, you're Whitney's slowly right. trying to Thank ease us in. Thank you for seeing that. To rings. Okay. You can wear a ring. It's fine. Lana doesn't like that I wear the ring when I'm not sleeping. She's like, what the fuck are you wearing that now? Wow. It's, it's, it's ugly, and you shouldn't have it on. And I said, it's I don't a know, little just... Armenian. <laughs> <laughs> like most people don't know it's a Nuva ring, just so you know, people yeah. just think it's a ring. Yeah, uh, and yeah. you're you're fine with that. I, I'm I'm fine with it. Uh, I've I, you know, I'm like it looks like you think that's oh, cool, yeah. and it's I mean, on the worst finger. Don't I it? would think it was from a dead relative, and you're paying homage, like because it's not decorative. I think okay. he got it at Ed Hardy. All right. <laughs> uh, edit this out. Does it, do, <laughs> does it do anything for you during the day? No, it, it monitors heart rate, oh, it does. exercise. Oh, right. so uh, where's the charger for it? Where do you put the charger? Charger's bedside. Okay, okay. My, oh, in, whoa. In, in my bedside That's table. a big commitment. Yeah. Oh, really? so, a and you know what? I can't a lot of times get it off because I'm swollen. Shouldn't and the ring tell you, like, 
take me off now. You're going to get swollen It should. Soon. It should say, a lot of salt in your diet. I'm swelling up. Um, I can't even get off. Take me off. Even though like, I, I'm trying to get this off as they're talking about it, and it, it's not coming off. <laughs> so, so you can't even charge it. It just lives there. That's it. it doesn't even You're work. You're just wearing it as jewelry. <laughs> now, I where, probably where had a good from? six minutes Wait. in that hour. I'm from Washington, D.C. I grew up half Washington, D.C., half a rural town in Virginia called Roanoke, Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you go back to either one, like to have a home in either place? No, sir. Not no. often. But I'm thinking, like, where would we go if we were going to move somewhere else? I'm obviously like everybody else thinking about moving, but I yeah. just haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, I was like yeah. looking at places in Virginia. I was looking at places in Texas, um, but I'm just not there yet. Right. Where would you? You're here. I'm already in a small town. Yeah, yeah. I live like an uh, hour outside of Buffalo. Okay, so, nice. Yeah. Is there Lyme disease up there? Wait. Oh my God, my wife died. Shut up. Yeah, we we're in the woods once, and she so died. I have a shot? So crazy. How's it going? You said Lyme disease. Yes. Right? From yeah, from Medea. Yeah. Yeah. From a, a deer. Yeah. I thought you said from Medea. I said from Medea. Medea. <laughs> what does that have to do well, with from anything? From a deer. I mean, why would you ask about Lyme disease of all things? Because <laughs> it's my only fear in life is Lyme disease. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Really? It's a nightmare. Well, your wife got it. Yeah, yes. I know it was a And what happened? But the whole thing, she got the ring on her yes, and stuff like that. Yes, that's a big deal. I know. She got medication and, you know, it took a while. She got better. But, like, I remember her hands would be swelled up. And oh, it was bad. I can't, that's my whole thing with living. I looked at places in Connecticut, upstate New York. Yeah. I was like, baby, that's the deal. I will not live in a place where going outside with your child, you have to worry, you have to spread right. each other's butt cheeks to look for a killer bug. Right. Like, I'm yeah, not yeah, doing right. it. And I live in a village. It's called Fredonia. So I live in the village, and you can't hunt deer in the village. And, mm -hmm. and now there's like, I walk my dog in this one spot, herds of them, herds of mm -hmm. deer. And they talk about bringing in these hunters that'll that'll take care of these deer but mm. then the people in town are like well it's not safe if we're all here so something's got to be done because now the it's just getting to be so much your dog goes a little bit off the sidewalk it was like get the dog bring it back it's fucking deer man it's ridiculous okay so so the lyme disease thing i went to the hamptons to do a gig there's that hamptons whatever convention. I don't know what he don't know. What whatever it was. Hamptons, you've done it. Hamptons. Hamptons fancy. It what can I? That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I went to the Hamptons. Illuminati. No big <laughs> deal. It was for a show <laughs> and I go outside and the Hamptons supposed to be super fancy. It's not mm -hmm. that fancy. I, I don't get it. Usually when I go to rich fancy places, I'm like, I, this is not, I want like Mar-a-Lago. I want like gold <laughs> toilets. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. want, it's like, what is this world pretending <laughs> to be poor with the sheds <laughs> and the windmills? Like it's all these rich people yeah. that are like cosplaying <laughs> poor with like a fruit yeah. Stand and shit. Like right. I just am like, why? What are we doing? You guys are so fruit rich. Fruit stand with no one working. Just buy what you want. Put it the money in the box. Yeah, totally. Like honor system. <laughs> like it's all these criminals, you know. And it's like the richest people in the world that it's like, let's live in a cottage for the weekend. Like and be like ironic about it and have like a basket. Like it's just like I want. Literally, yeah. we yeah. Sebastian and I actually. When we went to Dubai, why did it happen that you stayed at the Burj Hotel, which was the seven star hotel, and I was at like the Hilton South? Yeah, I had a private gig there for a wedding. Separately. Yeah. Okay. So that's when I asked, I think you and uh, Dwayne Perkins. Dwayne Perkins to come and say, see the, oh, like, oh, this is, you want to see the room or whatever. I we do. go in, the walls are a fish tank. Yeah. Okay. We go up. My the room God. is just like covered in gold, just marble, purple, wow. purple. Why is purple the color of money? Either total <laughs> trash or money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Man. like purple velvet curtains. I was like, yeah. this is, this is, as a growing up poor, this is what I thought rich looked yeah, like. Yeah, you know? right, so right. the Hamptons, you're kind of like, what are we doing? Right. And so I'm at a gig there. We go outside. I'm like it's in the pool or something. And then I get the tick. I pull it off. Holy shit. Where I come from in Virginia, you pull a tick off, you bite its head off you set it on fire it's fine you don't have to worry about lyme disease and stuff so then i like posted on instagram just being an idiot content 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 we got to push those tickets hey guys like uh, tick uh, uh, <laughs> and then avril lavigne calls me okay so she is i guess she got lyme disease and was out for like four years she was napping for like and she called me and she's like you got to put the tick in a bag and you got to take the tick to the hospital and get all right. like a like an antibiotic drip or something yeah. i didn't do any of that shit but yeah, yeah, yeah. i was fine wow greg fitzsimmons is i think on great comedian Greg Fitzsimmons was on an IV drip for years because of Lyme disease. So, so I'm we gonna... got, I called my wife's early because she, she was not going to do anything about it. And I was like, how do you know it's not a tick bite? So then she went in and the doctor could, I didn't, she didn't have the tick, but he could tell from the bite 
what it was, medication right away, pumping mm. it in and got it. But I mean, Avril Otherwise, I'd live there. Wait a minute. Yeah. Are you, uh, was that a joke about biting the head off? No. What, what, what do you have to do? You want to just bite the head off the dick. What does that do? Just kills it. Because if you just try to kill it, I mean, unless you like, it's a big gray one and you get all the blood out, they'll stay alive. On your body, you got to get the head off, basically, is yeah. what you're saying. You want to rip the head off. Yeah. What do you mean on your body? So a tick embeds in your skin. Yep. Yeah. And if you take the tick out, mm -hmm. you're saying the head is caught in the skin? Usually, but it depends on what like um, status it is, I guess, at the time. But if it's just crawling on you and you pull it off, you do want to bite its head off so that you know it's dead. <laughs> I would think biting the head off a uh, tick, you would get the disease just through the bite. Right, no? Right. I don't well, know. But in Virginia, they don't have Lyme disease. It's right. only in the Connecticut, New York area, which is why there's the rumor that it's a bioweapon. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. I yeah. didn't think about that. Where are y'all on conspiracy theories? No, I are feel we? like, I feel like, no, um, I'm, I'm not there on that one. No, but then no. why is it? <laughs> why is, why I feel is, like we're on Joe Rogan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Well, They call me Ho Rogan. <laughs> so why though Where? is Lyme disease only on the ticks in the Hamptons, affluent, political, yeah. important people, Right. Connecticut, affluent, important mm -hmm. people, Okay. Mm -hmm. But not Virginia. People not worth killing. Mm -hmm. okay. Ticks with Lyme disease are only in that area. And yeah. what about what about? Uh, well, I mean, like you know, how come a certain plant grows? How come there's no redwoods on Long Island? You know what I mean? Like you could say that about anything, right? Totally. But the thing is, it's the one bug that's everywhere, but it only gives that disease in the New York and Connecticut area. Oh man. Right. Can Riddle me this. <laughs> I worked with well, Roseanne. Okay, my facts are different than yours. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> All right, I'm uh, on AlexJones.net, not even .com. Okay. All right, uh, we don't normally go down these. Uh, no, we don't. By the way, why not? <laughs> why? why not? I don't, I'm kind of at the point. Where do you get your news? Listen, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had a Yahoo email. <laughs> for a while sure. and uh, I just go to Yahoo News and I look at the four squares there. So how is Cher doing? And Cher's doing great. <laughs> and, uh, so how are Taylor all the Vegas shows? Taylor Swift has a uh, an album coming out. <laughs> so. She does. I know. She plugged it at the Grammys. <laughs> and that tornado in Boise, only two people hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not a big news guy. I'm Me not either. I'm not looking it's, for a lot of news, you neither know. Neither am I. So when I hear stuff like this, I'm like, I kind of prefer gossip to news, mm. quite frankly. And then my dad, one thing that he did, it's interesting. Like I'm sure and knowing you and your audience already knows, I'm sure that like, yeah, I don't know as you as well, Pete, but like the way you became a comedian, the way your brain was trained to kind of question everything, my dad was um, really obsessed with making sure that I got good grades. I think because I was a girl, he had a boy before me, he really wanted to make sure I was going to succeed in life. I think he was just like, being a girl is a nightmare. He yeah, would yeah. wake me up in the middle of the night and like quiz me on spelling words when there wasn't even a test. Oh, like wow. I think he just didn't know how to have a daughter yeah. and he just wanted me to be smart. And he would drill me, drill me, drill me on future chapters. He would make me, do, he would make up his own quizzes on a yellow legal pad to try to make up what the quiz was going to be. He would wake me up. He'd make me take the quiz before I ate breakfast in the morning before I had anything because you'd be like you don't know what the circumstances of the test are going to be like you don't know you're, 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 you're yeah, going to be distracted yeah. like anyone can get this right when they're in the right mind but so he prepare me for all these things and he would drill me on all this history stuff and then when I was done and got everything right he closed the book and go well how do we know the book is right like he was always like, what are these oh, wow, people man. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, they weren't there. They don't know. I mean, this is like, this this probably isn't true, but like you need to memorize it all. And it yeah. always got me thinking like what, even the stuff we know, like is kind of true, you know? Like yeah. even the news, you're like in, in 15 years, this is all going to be debunked anyway. It's like science. Like I'm not going to bother learning any more science because every 15 years, remember when like acai berry right. was good for you? And now yeah. sugar's the worst thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are we doing now that we think right. is so healthy that in 15, or what words are we not allowed to say now? Mm -hmm. And we then now we have to say, you know, it's crazy. homeless, what is it? Un currently unhoused oh, or something right. instead of homeless. Yep. Why do you think it's going to go back to homeless in 15 years? Like, or, or is it just going to be? Rogan like, will have shot them all in the head. Yeah. There will be none left. <laughs> but like you said, it keeps changing. So why does it matter? It's totally. like insane, you know. And that's my thing with the news. So I'm like, the true thing is going to be debunked. I'm sure at some point. So why not go with the crazy conspiracy theory anyway? You know. Right. I was watching in my hotel room last night this old movie. I just called Under Siege, 
with um, Annette Bening, Denzel Washington, sure. and there's like a terrorist, right? And, sure. and this is years ago. This movie came out in like 25 years ago, maybe at least 30 years ago. And, and the people coming on going, we got no more immigration. I'm like, oh my God, how embarrassing. We're saying the same shit 30 same years shit. later. Same the shit. same shit. It makes you realize what idiots, it's all yes. bullshit. It cracks me up when people are like, America's never been more divided. And you're like, do you not remember the, there was a civil war yeah, yeah, where yeah. they literally, the North and the South were fighting each other in like know. fields? Like, I'm pretty sure we've been more divided. Damn. But yeah, every like everything happening today has happened. It's just looked different. I'm so afraid I'm going to be, if I'm lucky enough to get to a certain age, you know, just sitting in my backyard and going, what the fuck did I waste all that yep, time? Yep. You asshole. You ass Like, yep. you know. But it's like news. I feel like news people like don't have sports. News is kind of in politics. It's like sports for dorks. You know, yeah. if you don't have a sports team, you're going to kind of do that. Did you ever meet Tom Cruise? Let's get down. <laughs> the, let's get down the brass tacks. I'm sorry. You guys think we All landed right. on the moon? Okay, uh, Whitney, I don't care what we did or where we did it. Did you ever hang out with Tom Cruise? Tom okay, Cruise. we're running out of time. I want to know. <laughs> Tom Cruise. No, but I did have a little bit of a brush with Scientology. Really? Um, yeah. Like Thought about when it? I first moved to L.A., a friend of mine who who was like they kind of track people that were are sort of like making it in the business and she was in a movie they invited her to go to brunch like at the castle at the castle on, on Franklin. Franklin right yeah, yeah. and we go and I'm in like I am so sold on this thing because again like I grew up poor I come out to Hollywood right. Hollywood's kind of a shithole and I was just like what this isn't Hollywood like this isn't at all what I and then I went to the Scientology Center it's like I was like this is a cat this is where I want to be right. and they take us on this tour and I was like I'm yes please I'm in I'd like to do this but what's in there is it is it like is it people quiet do you, is it like mingling what what is in it's kind of just like a weird like you know extra it feels like extra now that I'm older and I've been on TV shows you know how extras in the background are kind of but it's like yeah. a little much. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like that. <laughs> Everyone just kind of feels like it, they're all like laughing like a little too hard. They're like doing an impression yeah. of happy people. Yeah. People doing an impression of happy people. Oh, okay. oh, so it's like the well, opposite of comedy. That's like <laughs> North Korea when you're in public, you have to do that. That's right? exactly what it is. Uh, totally. Satellite's and everyone's looking. Yeah. It's all very um uh it, it just feels like everyone's been dressed by a costumer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's just kind of like too on the nose. And too, but I went there on a Sunday, which is their big recruiting day. So I think everybody dresses oh, up and yeah, everyone. Yeah. Gives, and it's like a beautiful apartment complex. And they give if you sign up, they will give you a place to live. They give you a job. They promise to put you on TV. I was like, I would love, I would love to do this. They're like, we're good. They said yeah. no to me because they were trying to recruit my friend, you That's know. Right. So I was rejected by Scientology. So wow, I hold a grudge. Shaking themselves now, man. I mean, I've <laughs> by the way, every time I talk about them on the podcast, it gets taken off Instagram. So really, mm -hmm. edit it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I was writing that a Kevin James show, and um, Leah was on season two. She came on, and like season one, we were on Long Island. The lot was pretty basic. By season two, they had to put up a whole gate. And I'm like, what's with the gate this year? And they're like, well, Leah's on season two, and it's for the Scientology. And it would be a van out in the parking lot. And she'd point it out and tell us that's the van. And it was so crazy because it was like, because she was doing that show at the time, the reality show sure, about sure, sure. them. And, yeah. um, and it was like, if you just don't come with the van, she's got no show. You're giving her a show by being yeah, here with the van. A hundred percent. Crazy, man. I couldn't believe it was real. Yeah. I was like, no way. That yeah. van, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, fascinating religion. But if Tom Cruise asked me to join him to be in a movie, I'm in. <laughs> Where? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The guy doesn't mess around. I mean, I've heard some pretty wild stories about him. Like, um, I think it was uh, Bill Hader, who's such a genius, was uh, on SNL, obviously, uh, for ages. And Tom Cruise came on SNL, right? He was, like, on for something. And he was married to Katie Holmes at the time. And you know when like a really famous person tries to act like they're like us? Yeah. And you're like, what do you, what, let's, I don't want you to be like me. Be Ben Stiller. Be yeah. De, De Niro. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so like I worked with a really big celebrity on something once and he was like talking to us. It was like me and a couple scumbag comedians and we're sort of like, oh, what do you want to do for lunch? And he's like, yeah, what do you guys want to do for lunch? And his assistant brought up like a Tup a glass Tupperware of like steamed broccoli. It was like, here's your lunch. He's like, I'm eating with that. What is that? Like he totally uh, like <laughs> pretended that that. Like, he's like, I don't want that. Why would you bring me that? So what are we gonna do, guys? And we're like, <laughs> yeah, it's layers. This has got layers. This has got layers. So, Good listener so right here. Good listener. Anyway, so Tom Cruise is like trying to like be cool around the you know SNL uh -huh. writers or in the room or whatever. And uh, who I don't know who it is who said. Um, so Tom like. 
what's it like being Tom Cruise? Like someone just like asked him that. And apparently he goes, ah, you know, it's 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 I'm just like you guys. Me and Katie, we have the same exact problems. You know, she'll come home and she'll be like, ah, oh, they were out of ravioli at the ravioli store. <laughs> yeah. So like. Does he think there's a ravioli store? Right. Or he's uh, like, I'm just like you guys. Oh, oh, I, oh, I didn't even get that. No, no, I, I go to a ravioli store. I was going to say, you know what? The, t- the only two people that actually t- <laughs> no. <laughs> but to be clear, Tom Cruise doesn't. Some right. assistant goes somewhere oh, right. or right. else it's yeah. made in his yeah. basement. You go to a store with just ravioli? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's a called, pasta no, store. No, no, no. It's no, it's called Raviolis Are Us and it's an amazing <laughs> story. by the way, ring came off. Oh, uh-huh, boom. <laughs> oh no. But how are we gonna know? I mean, I, so, I'm you know what? on the edge of my seat. <laughs> no. um, of how it came off? Wow. About, no, just your pulse. Yeah, you're just your... winging it right now. Yeah, I'm going to wing it for the oh, last oh, next half hour. When you leave, I'll put in. it back on Hope again. the heart hangs in. And then is it in your in an app? It's in an app, yeah. Okay, got it, got yeah, it. Yeah. I thought when you said ravioli store, like meaning the store where you'd get ravioli. I didn't know, like, of yeah. Of course I, I did this that. in I front of that. Italian See? people. Okay, <laughs> most people <laughs> would be like, oh, he's so rich and out of touch that he thinks there's a store that, like, he was just in Positano. Do you know what I mean? Where they do have ravioli stores. I, I think like, it's positive. Where do I go? Know, but I'll let Where's that, that slide. Slide. <laughs> I don't even think she said they, it. <laughs> they're out because I'm on it all. <laughs> this is like, I don't, well, that was crazy to everybody else. You know what I mean? Right. Like him trying to make small talk. Well, I saw, it's no. interesting you say that because I was watching the Grammys and I saw Taylor Swift mm-hmm. lean over to another table and go, hi, I saw her lips and uh, I'm Taylor. And I'm like, all right, all right. But wouldn't it be obnoxious if she didn't introduce herself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't I've n I don't know. I feel like it reaches a point where you're so famous you just say hi. It, I, mean, I think that's annoying. Yeah, but you too. just said you can't stand when famous people try to act like they're not famous. <laughs> you just said that. I'm trying to agree that's with you. That's not God, we would have lasted like- a half hour. <laughs> a half hour. <laughs> She's not like if Taylor Swift came up to you and it was just like hi. Yes. Right. Oh, then I'd go to him. Oh, bro, no name. She doesn't say the yeah, name. Yeah, oh, God. We were so <laughs> yeah, Do you know what yeah. would just be so obnoxious? I think that's just like basic human decency and like a habit. Oh, but but you're ripping on Tommy C for calling it a ravioli <laughs> store. Okay, okay. Boy, you got a fine this line. This was like, I really did not know my audience on this one. A ravioli store is a wild concept to someone that like did not grow up. Is there really a ravioli store in LA? No, no. I'm okay, kidding. got there, it. Okay, no. see, they're da, da. pathological no. liars. Da, da, dom. Da, da, da. Da- Doms, yeah, yeah. yeah da- but da- it's got other things. It's got jams, it's got jellies, yeah, it's got know, all kinds the, the, of. It's not a ravioli store. I know, but you could call whatever you get. And like, if I was getting yogurt, I'm going to the yogurt store. Like, there I'm going is to a store yogurt ha- store, though. That's all right. There's well, a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, all yogurt is sold all alone right. at stores, yeah, right, right, yeah. and it's own thing. All right. I think you're hanging on and just he said the wrong thing. He no, meant to say you supermarket. Guys are he said ravioli story. And you're so, walking around I'm, telling the story. I'll let go when you let go. Okay. All right. Let it go. Who's uh have uh, you ever been starstruck? Yeah, oh uh, yeah. I, I had dinner with Billy Joel and I God, I was Whoa. so good. I was so good. I was fly on the walls. Me, Kevin James, Chaz Palmateri, and Billy Joel after his concert. Wait, hold on. Slow down. Right, right. Chaz Palmateri owns a restaurant. Got it. And Who's that? Uh, Bronx Tale. Okay. Right. Yes. Got it. Yeah, yeah. That, that bothered me. That bothered me. me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I, I, I knew that person. I feel like I've seen him on Raya. I don't know. Chaz Palmateri? <laughs> right. <Wow. laughs> Jesus Christ. Who's Chaz Palmateri? Oh, my God. <laughs> you going to keep doing this? Yeah. <laughs> my goal is... Take a moment and think about my... that. That's crazy. This guy's like... Uh, it's just huge. For a time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me just get some context here, okay? okay. Yeah, so he owns a restaurant. Um, well, he's an actor. Okay, got it. Of course, of course. There's a Okay, got it. Yeah, he's another one. What's what's the other one with uh the other big movie with the, all the celebrities or stars in it? Oh, this. wait, Stuart Little. Analyze this. Got no. it. Stuart Little. <laughs> got it. No. Usual suspects? That's it. Uh, ah, that's it. Yes. Usual suspects. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Cool. Anyway, He's at the dinner with the with right. Palm and Terry, who owns the restaurant. And go ahead. I went to. I was writing on Kevin's show. Nice. I, I had just known him for like two weeks. Kevin, he's from Long Island too, and he knows I love Billy Joel. And he's like, he's good friends with him. We wanted, we're going to go see him tonight in the garden, right? So I was. I meet Billy backstage, and he's talking about Tony Bennett singing tonight. 
And I go, and he goes, Tony, we got to keep up with him. You never know where Tony's going to go. And I go to Billy. Oh, no, I saw you at Shea Stadium. I don't even think Tony knew he was outdoors. Uh -huh. And Billy laughed a little. And then I bring that up because about two minutes later, he goes to Kevin. What are you, what are you doing after the show? And Kevin's like, nothing, why? And he goes, well, let's go. I mean, I have a dinner. I'm going to Chaz Palminteri's restaurant for dinner. And, and in my head, I'm like, it was the Tony Bennett comment. Yeah, that got me got in. That got me in, right? So then I go there. And again, I had been drinking the whole show. So I also didn't want to, like, not, I'm singing, drinking. So I didn't want to say I was just drunk. And, I, you know, we chatted very little. I didn't say much. You know, I was just letting everyone else, uh, the, Billy was with a woman and Chaz was his wife. And then at the end, you know, I said, nice to meet you. He took a photo with me. I said, you know, big fan, blah, blah, blah. And then he's waiting for his limo. And I'm, I got a few with me. And I go back out there. And I'm like, hey, Billy, I see you wearing the Met hat. I'm a Yankee fan. I thought you liked the Yankee. Oh, oh and I can, I can, I can feel oh, the cringe, cringe come on. I'm like, cringe. like goosebumps. You couldn't just let it go. Yeah, it was almost, mm, yeah. like God. Had to I sabotage it. I did. I ruined it for myself. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I like them both. And I'm like, oh my God, you're imitating what I do to people outside the funny mode. <laughs> <laughs> At the time. <laughs> There's something about, I used to do this um, when I first moved to LA. It, when I first met celebrities, when I first moved here, I would just ask them how much money they had. I didn't think it was a weird question. Like, I didn't realize how sort of tacky that is, yeah, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I met, like, Hank Azaria, and he was like, oh, nice to meet you. And I was like, how much money do you have, like, total? And he'd be like, what? And I was like, oh. Wow. Like, I didn't think that was oh, weird oh, at all. I was just, like, curious. Right. And I was at the Friars Club once. I think it was for the Quentin Tarantino roast, and I asked Sam Jackson, and he answered right away. He went $18 million. And I was like, oh, Again, I had no money. I that didn't sound like a lot, right? At the yeah. time, I'm like a, 22 years old. It's like Sam Jackson. I think he's got 500 billion dollars. Like I don't know how anything works. He's uh, yeah. a, surprised. 18 million. That's what. Oh, uh, but yeah. then he and that's what I did. I was like, oh, and he and then he got like he was like, well, no, I mean liquid. You know, I got a boat. Like and then he, <laughs> and then, and then he starts kind of like, and then I'm like, oh my god, I'm so I have no, I'm have negative forty thousand. So please don't. It was like spiraled into this thing. Yeah. He's like, I got the ex-wife and I got property over here, and you know, it's like that's just I got assets and four hundred one k. And I was like, yeah. oh my god, let me give it. <laughs> yeah, totally. So funny. The whole portfolio. <laughs> yeah, the first person to actually tell me, I was like, oh, that's it. Like, hmm. Because uh, I was trying to figure out like. How to be a person in the world. Have you been starstruck? <sighs> yeah, I got starstruck once by Forrest Whitaker in a Starbucks. And I was so starstruck that I like when I'm starstruck, I just act rude because I respect yeah. the person's time so much. And I don't want to waste it or embarrass myself after I did that so many times. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, Wendy Cummings, like such a big fan. And I was like, thanks. And I walked outside and I sat in my car and I was like, you have to go back in there. Like, you have got to go back in there and apologize. Like, that was so rude. Why do you have a duck on your knee, Cansifus? What that kind just, of pig oh, farm are you running over that, here? That, that just notifies us of, of time. So it sounds that we've done an hour of content. It's, it's funny. No one else has rec recognized the the, uh, the thing here. except for the comedian. The, the comedian. The audience isn't even funny. It's, it's funny, isn't it? You didn't even hear it. He catch it on the tape. She goes, what's with the duck? I'm trying to save him. I go, he's always walking around with that thing. <laughs> And, then, and you tell the truth. I was gonna lie to Wendy about a fucking know. duck. Cause no, <laughs> fucking Forrest Gump over oh, here. Like, here's my duck. I'd like, rather uh, have you think this what? guy walks around I with know, a but, duck. But I know him. No, you know what? I've had you tears in my eyes a lot this show. That's awesome, man. I never do. <laughs> no, hey, Pat. No one was like Pat can just go. No, no. Why no, can't no. Pat just hold his hand up? He he's the one that fucking said him. He's like, I can bring a duck in here. What? <laughs> That's what he said. Pat. Oh my god. I think he goes back to Whitney and he goes, I have them using a dog. <laughs> literally, literally when it's been an hour, Pat goes. Oh, like that's, that's how we do. Yeah. We've been ducky. And but no the one's duck, noticed the, the it. The duck is, nor is normally there. He's so weird looking that you would think maybe he has the duck because he's trying to quit smoking. <laughs> so he bring, carries a duck to quit smoking. You know, like something like that. Just like pedophile brings it over to try to talk to <laughs> your kids. The, the only one who could have a duck on his knee and most people wouldn't notice, but you do. <laughs> Wait. None yeah. of your guests have noticed no, that there was no nobody, duck. And then all of a sudden there's a duck. Nobody has vo voiced it. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know who does this? And, and I don't know. Bobby Lee does something like this where he, him Bobby and, Lee's mentally ill. Yeah. yeah. 
I expect more from you two. This was uh, this this was supposed to be over there. You were not supposed to see the duck. I'm, and it, when, when he has it on his knee, like it's a fucking pet. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to make a reference was, to it. But also, by the way, I am a new mom and I'm like very interested in duckies at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So my, I'm like, is this the one that tells the temperature in the top? I'm like, which one is that? Like, well, nobody knew about it. So now right. future shows, people are going to write messages. Yeah. Give them the duck. <laughs> <laughs> the duck. Listen, the duck, you know, in defense of the duck, it's for guests that we don't particularly, if we're not having, it never happened yet, but if we're having a bad time, it's good to know when the hour is over and you can wrap it. Yeah. Sure, sure. Well, you know, to ignore the duck. You've been fantastic. Well, yeah. thanks. Yeah, you're beyond duck. You're beyond duck. Did that I mean, make I any was sense? just told to wrap it up with a, fucking bullshit. with a child's oh. toy. Oh, my God. Yeah, we'll, we'll do something. Yeah. Something else, maybe a figurine, a Star Wars figurine. Really I don't know. Listen, listen. Can you just say it's been an hour? No, no one said anything about the duck until you. <laughs> and I'm not worried about it. So I want to, I want to ask a question before you leave. You know, your beautiful child here, and so gracious. Yeah, of you to take I said some time it before out. the show too. Congratulations. What do you mean? Thank you. Oh my gosh, I had to. Female comedians, if they don't have kids, they become activists. Well. <laughs> This could have gone yeah, south. You know, talking about you came here poor and and you come to Los Angeles. Are female comedians? I don't see gender. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is why. This is why I'm literally right. thrown off with guests. Do female comedians are they supportive of one another? In were you gonna touch my arm? Just curious. I was, but it was too far. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> I stopped short. I could see. I, I think you short. misjudged it. <laughs> I stopped short because I could tell that he was like, "I need to figure out a way to make her not interrupt me." And you were gonna do like this yeah. power move, like yeah. a, oh, a little, wow. a little but touch. It was a little you know what? A little touch goes. Wait a minute. Let me talk. <laughs> yeah, I got. I got this one. Uh, <laughs> like, and then it's her. I feel like I feel like my questions. <laughs> I'm not like they're not they're, they're falling on deaf ears here. I tried to bring well, back the other one, and then you made me bail on it. No, because it was, it was too far gone. But the the female the female power move. I gotta say though, when she called that a power move, it's, it's a woman's a troublemaker. I could never like like <laughs> your father did great. He wanted to raise you a certain way, and boy did he. Yeah, because she saw that as a that's a power move. Yeah, you you're shutting my you, voice down. You you're stay where you're supposed to be. Oh, no, but, I don't think he. It's just it's, an Italian it's, it's, it's thing. Italian it's thing. It's yeah, yeah, no, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like, hey, let's go to the ravioli store. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> so good, so good. Is is there a is there a support system within the female stand up community? No. No. no, or is it very competitive? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, see, yeah. I, I believe with everybody like with this support now, like oh, we're supporting yeah. this and that. Is that is that a, a front, or is, are people really happy for other people that are making it? I mean, it's, are it's you? I, not really. <laughs> well, There's your answer. Yeah. I mean, no. like, everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'm so, no. I'm so supportive. It's, and fucking, it's, 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 so she saw how I was when I met you in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me. It's like, I like you know, when you get to the point where people are like, I got into comedy because of you, and you're like, fuck. <laughs> Why? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's like there's all these like girls <laughs> at the comedy store that are getting great set yeah. times. So, like, you're my hero. You're why uh, I got into comedy. I'm like, well, get out. <laughs> Okay. Get out of here, dude. You're getting in my way. Yeah. You're taking jobs. Get the fuck out of my <laughs> way, bitch. You know, it's interesting. I truly do like supporting just anyone, guys, girl. I don't really see the gender part of it. Not because I don't see gender. I definitely do. And if, But like, I <clears throat> enjoy seeing people do well. Um, And I think doing podcasting, like you want people to come on and kill. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah, want yeah. people to be funny. You don't want people to come on and bomb. You know, yeah. we need guests. So I think that there is this symbiotic relationship with podcasting podcasting where you you know but that's true yeah everyone's podcasting now so you know if you want them to come on your cast it's not yeah. like the old days when no one had anything to offer it's you know? like mutually beneficial yeah. i feel like yeah. you know but i do think that it's also forced me to be more social you know and also it's also a nice way to not have to be social when you go out to the clubs if someone wants to talk to you, you're like let's podcast uh, let's do this for money right. we don't have to do this for free yeah. You know, let's do this, you know, let's monetize our conversation. Right. So it's also, but I do think a little bit like, you know, I used to find a lot of comfort and sanity in being able to talk to comedians in the green room, even if it's for five seconds here, five seconds there. Like, how was that gig for you? How was this thing for you? What was your walkout? Just whatever. Yeah. And now everything is for public consumption and we've stopped kind of just being real friends. That's so that might not be healthy, but yeah. I don't know. 
I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't really. I mean, girls look. I, I. I'm sure that there's the same kind of competition with guys, but I do think that because there's such a scarcity complex with the girls, because it used to be like Nikki Glaser and I always talk about that. Like it used to be me or you. There was one that needed to be on the lineup. It was going to be me or it was going to be you. So we right. were sort of more pitted against each other. But yeah, like, yeah. you know, that's changing them now. I think maybe I don't. I don't really think about it. Mm. Like comedy's so hard. I'm not. I'm not looking for ways to make it harder. I'm like, let me. Let's be enemies. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's funny when you say I'm when I'm on the road a lot of times, like the person open for me, like I'm like, where's so and so? I don't I don't have a set person. When I go someplace, mm -hmm. I like to choose somebody. And uh oh well he's hanging out about I go br bring him or her in. Let's chat, you yeah. know. But because that same thing, I like that vibe and yeah. that, but so often nowadays, like it's so different now that after a little while I'm like, all right, so good luck out there. <laughs> yeah, Godspeed. <laughs> That's my way of saying, get the fuck out yeah. now. I'm gonna call an old comic friend of mine, see if he's off stage. <laughs> We're gonna talk from my green room. Because I can't relate to this some, sometimes, you know. It's That's like, so interesting. And then they'll say that they love somebody who I don't like. You know, the comedian, like, oh man, you, we just saw so and so last week in my head. I'm like, get the fuck. You know, they, but they probably somebody, are trying to make small talk to make you like them. Right. You know what I mean? They're right. probably like, we saw so-and-so. They were awesome. And they think they're going to get on your good side. And you're just like... Well, I was telling him, I will even say where I was playing Portland. And I've never been there. Maine yet. or Oregon. Oregon. Oh. And I was overwhelmed by everything, though. Yeah. Homeless and all that, you know. And it's a, it was just after an ice storm. It is a mess. It is a mess. And it was bringing me down. And the show was great. I had a great time with the people. But it was like a weird night. And it was an ice storm. And I come off. And the MC was a weird dude to open her. And I go back to the green room and he goes, uh, uh, so how, uh, how'd you feel? How, he says, I'm like, how was it? How was it? Like, like, like it was such oh, a random no. thing. To, and I had just had enough of it on a road. And I go, Hey Pete, great set. It's been so fun working with you. Nice to meet you. Hope I can do it again. Jesus. Fuck. Did you do that? I said all that. I go, Jesus fuck. And then I walk by. He goes, oh, I go, D dude, don't even bother now. So the set wasn't great. No, it was fine. <laughs> It, oh, that's what you're getting out of. That's good. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. So it didn't, didn't go well. No. <laughs> no, I, it did. And I and I thought that was such a weird thing to say, you know? Uh-huh. Right, right. Dude, I hate dude, I hate right, that shit. Right, I hit right. I cannot stand it when people say like backhanded compliments when you come off stage. Like you come off stage, you think you did well, and someone's like, you know, you're too smart for them. Right. You're just, uh, oh, right. yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. I think I did fine. What? Right. I well, hate that shit. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yes. Or like you come off stage and they're just like, weird crowd. Yeah. You're like, I didn't, I didn't think they were weird. Right. But do you say that or do you just go, do you, cause he, he's got a, a like a, I mean, you, you actually saw what the comedian <laughs> actually saw that night. Yeah, he snapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, are you <laughs> able to hold that in or do you give a snide comment back? How do you handle that? I definitely hold it in because I have an insecurity that people already think I'm a bitch because I just have, a, I guess, bitchy face or if I, you know, I yeah, just, I yeah. just will now, if it's someone at my, le like, if you said that to me, I'd be like, what are you doing? Right. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Like I make fun of it or whatever. Right, we have a joke right, about it. But yeah. if it's someone who's like a feature, an opener or something, I'm just like. But they get away with this poor behavior. So much of the young people today, this this, this like mousy me. bullshit, yeah. like because they never yeah. get called on it, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, don't you, if you don't know how to communicate, get, yeah, yeah. Get just, or just don't at all. Don't no. at all. Don't at all. I've done that. Through my years, I've always made a point when I'm playing some place. If I don't like the guy on or, mm. or gal, or I don't think they're funny. I've actually, if I'm in the path when they come off, mm -hmm. I'll move like as a comic. I won't stand there because I don't want to say to you, good set, because that's not true. So Last I, time I was in Portland, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. I thought you were going to say I walked away. Helium, I did that helium. Like I'll go up there to just like work out new material in small clubs. And I always try to say like, let's get a local feature, local opener, local host, because it gives them work. You know what I mean? It's yeah. so hard to get yes. stage time. You're yes. trying to help them out, right? It's too expensive to move and to They get LA to work with you. That's he awesome. He took a exactly. shit in the bathroom. Oh. Of the green room. Oh, man. Show one Friday. 7 mm. p.m. show Friday night. That I had to bite my tongue about the entire weekend. Oh, my God. I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> the level of disrespect. That is, <laughs> that is. There's a bathroom, I mean, truly like 40 yards away. Right. In the green room. Right. And right. I didn't say anything. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a dick move. That is. <laughs> 
have you ever have you ever had the, them in the green room, the opener and his girlfriend or, or boyfriend, and then that that opener goes to go on, the girlfriend's sitting there. I'm like, it's the a package le- deal. Everybody get the fuck out. The less funny they are, the more people they have with them. Oh yeah, that's, that's always. True. I, I knew Sebastian was going to make it. He never one time came to the comedy store with one person, not a girl, not a friend, nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, he exactly. performs with his car keys in his pocket. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's in. He's out. He comes in like a panther, just no. in, out. I'll tell you what, you mm. bring up a great point. Mm. I never perform any with anything in my pocket, a wallet, keys, or anything. Mm. And I want your take on this. My take is I feel like if you're performing, that's like that's the uniform. Uh-huh. And if you came up there with a with a wallet in your pocket, uh-huh. you all you almost become one of the audience because the even to do what Jay Leno was saying, right. if you got a band aid on your finger, people are gonna go, well, "What's with the band aid?" He's gonna address but it. But if your finger's bleeding, they're gonna go, "What's with the bleeding on us?" <laughs> that's that I mean, he'd also just caught on fire. He used the band aid. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think if people looked and saw a wallet in right. your pocket that it's they would distracting. they would associate you with oh I wonder what he's got in right. the wallet yep. does he right. have cash in the wallet it breaks yeah. a little of the illusion yeah. the magic like if, right. if if Michael Jackson was was performing he had a fucking wallet on him I go get the fuck <laughs> this guy's one of us yeah you don't have sure. a wallet right. this like I like. I like thinking this guy don't even have a wallet. <laughs> totally, man. No, no, I know what he's saying. Like, do you come on stage like with any like a purse or like yeah. you? Like, Why was that so, a purse? Oh, you know, God, you yeah. gals. Yeah. Yeah. No, but like that would be your equivalent of a wallet. Like, hell, oh, let me put this yeah. here. Yeah, you know, like when you're really having a good set, do you take your heels off and go barefoot? <laughs> oh shit! Do you bring out your lady billfold? Like what? So you like, just keep your keys in your pussy, like. Yeah. Um, so, couple things. Number one, I actually find, and I'm just saying this as a person when someone comes on a plane with nothing that's more distracting to me yes. so i'm trying to think if i'm coming to see sebastian i see no wallet no keys i'm like where's the where does he is, does he keep him in the car where's his wallet does he just have like i would probably because i have comedian brain i would be noticing the thing nobody else noticed you know yeah. i come out usually with a purse yes because i'm not gonna leave in the green room with the filthy fentanyl rattled animals at the oh, comedy hold store on, hold on hold on you're talking comedy club. Let's say we see you in a theater. Okay. Right? You coming out with the purse? No. No, 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 no. Okay. Nothing. Not a thing. Okay. Not a thing. All right. Don't even have pockets, frankly. Usually don't have pockets at all because I try to dress up more. You've actually inspired me a lot about that. I, I, I went to Vegas one time and I was so ashamed. I was doing the win or something. And I was wearing like a nice hoodie. You know what I mean? It was like a nice one and I had like a like a bedazzled tank top underneath. I was kind of still in the stage where I was like, oh, I don't want to come off too feminine. I don't want to like be a distraction. I don't, I just kind of want to yeah. neuter myself. I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm very, um, the word isn't calculated, but I put a lot of thought into what I wear for things as to not be distracting, but also be comfortable. And, you know, I'm pretty physical on stage and I wore this like fancy hoodie over a thing and I came out and I saw this woman in like a gown. It's mm-hmm. like a sparkly gown. And I, the whole time was like, why the fuck am I wearing this hoodie? I, it's a nice hoodie, yeah. but it just looked like a hoodie. Right. You know what I mean? And it made me so ashamed, but I think sometimes you need moments like that right. to kind of level up. But wasn't there a woman like two feet away in a dirty sweatshirt Covered and you go, okay, I'm all right. Yeah. Holding that's a, that's a newborn. The whole place wasn't in gowns. Wearing a senior frog's tube top. <laughs> yes. But it was just this moment where it was like, I was just embarrassed and I'm sure yeah. nobody cared and they were like, she's so relatable and you know, I'm sure nobody thought about it except me, but I really, you know, it's like now you see people show up on stage in pajamas and you're just like, what are you doing? I you know? know? But I also think as you get older, I think for me when I was younger, it was, it made a little more sense, you know, yeah. but now it's kind of like I really want to convey that I'm, you know, showing respect. So I do, I don't wear jeans on stage anymore or usually things with pockets. Uh, see, now I wear, I have a pair of jeans I wear. I like them and a sweater, but I've come to the point now it's my uniform. So, because I would spend so much time in freaking a hotel mirror, freaking, yeah. you know, so I'm like, same thing every night. Just like uh, takes a load off, yeah. man. You ever thought about that? I, I wasn't listening. That's fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, 
and it's not worth repeating. So we're all good. Yeah. Okay. Get the duck back out. <laughs> Get the duck back up. Holy shit. Listen, listen, <laughs> we, oh. I, was just, I, was just, I didn't think you were going to come back to me on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought we were doing a show. <laughs> <laughs> like a two way conversation. Oh, I, mistake, I, I, didn't I didn't realize know. you were giving a deposition. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk, I tune out. <laughs> that, that, no, I just, I was already thinking about like, oh, a place we could go next oh, is right. like, do you bring your phone on stage? Because oh. I, I was like, oh, when I do have a pocket, I will bring my phone out, put it on the um, uh, stool, because then at the end of shows, now it feels like you got to do that audience shot or like shooting it. You know what I mean? So sometimes I will bring my See, phone. One, I don't like that. I don't either, but it I feels like, like you got to do it or else people like... You were never there. You were <laughs> never th You're irrelevant. You have retired from comedy. I don't even want to do uh -oh. it. I don't even know how to do it. At the end when you're like, hey guys, let's do an, I an Instagram and you're like doing this embarrassing <laughs> uh -oh. thing. So, but you don't bring your phone on stage. I record with it. That's it. But I don't hold it up and do the backdrop with the crowd. Where are we with the crowd work videos? Are we doing crowd work videos? Oh, God, no, none, none of that. None of that. Do you find that the audience is now, I find the audience has now been trained to just yell at you. Heckling to, oh, to is an all time high because everyone's there to get in your video. I have to tell them I'm not filming this. Right. We, uh, let's just have a show. I try to meet the crowd afterwards. I obviously don't play the level, uh, the size sometimes of you guys. So I was playing like a place and it got kind of, it was like a thousand. It was on the Long Island was sold out. So I told them, I can't, I can't, there's too many, I can't meet you. So I go, but if you want to take a photo, pull them out, take it yeah, out, yeah. right? I do that. I, I mean, it drives me nuts when I look out and I see someone's face yeah, lit by their phone. I mean, yeah. Miami is always the worst. I remember one time I was performing in Miami and shows are always at nine. Like the first show's at nine in Miami, right? And everyone's just like on blow, just out of their minds, oh like starting God. their first show at nine o'clock. And there were these girls in the audience and they were just like filming the entire show. And I was like doing some new material and I was like, and I finally just said to them, you know, cause they were just, I was just looking at their phone the whole show. I was like, do you guys mind just like not filming? I just haven't done this material yet. And they were like, oh, we're not, we're not filming you. We're <laughs> filming ours. <laughs> <laughs> like the arrogance of thinking that I was the yeah. thing worth filming here. Because right, they were just right. filming themselves yeah. watching the show. You know yeah. what I mean? And so I was just like, I could never, like, I'm so traumatized and embarrassed by that, yeah, that I will yeah. never ask someone to stop filming. But yeah, I don't do that. Do you do that? Your audiences are probably pretty. No, no, I don't. I don't. I, I, I noticed, though, my whole set was up on YouTube from Las Vegas. Somebody filmed the whole thing. Ugh. So then we got to take the, you know, Jeez. call You send one that. message and they take it down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I have a friend who he makes money from filming clips from football games and putting them on YouTube. And then he'll make the, like, some ad money. And then they'll take it down right away. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, so some people, I guess, are just, like, trying to make money or I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But that's yeah. not cool. That's yeah. not cool. I mean, you yeah. Know, uh, but they'll usually take it down right away for yeah, like no, no, copyright. They, 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 they took it down. They took yeah. it down. But we had to facilitate that. So um, this has been awesome. Listen, it really has. That was abrupt. Yeah. No. I would, well, no. I mean, the, the duck came out a long, long time. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Are you guys gonna say goodbye and thank you for listening or any of that? No. That was it. Listen, we 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 cut these really abrupt. Okay. Ten years, no money. <laughs>